Hello everyone, welcome to Shri Voyage. Today we're going to be going over a full face of one brand. And the brand I chose today was Hourglass. So let's go ahead and jump into the Hourglass look. So I'm going to start off first with the Hourglass Equilibrium Intensive Hydrating Eye Balm. Now they had a little kit that had three pieces. I think it was $20 or $25 where you can try their skincare. It had the eye balm, a essence toner, and a cleanser. And I have to say out of the three, this was by far my favorite. I've been using it for a couple of days now and I absolutely love the balmy texture. Very different than most eye creams or eye treatments I've used because it feels at first like, I don't want to say Vaseline, but it's just definitely got like a balm rich texture. So it's got that kind of jelly heavy richness but it does sink into the skin really beautifully and leaves a nice kind of taut appearance around the eye. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that for you guys so that you can see this here. So here's the texture. And to look at it, you can see it's quite rich. It almost reminds me of like, like a gloss, but it is not sticky like a gloss. So I'm gonna put a little on my eye here, just a couple of little drops. I love it, by the way, for around the outer eye area because it definitely hydrates really well and the makeup just sits really beautifully. I will say you have to let this sit a bit before you put any kind of medium to full coverage foundation on because it does want to grab a bit. But once it soaks into the skin, it just gives a really nice appearance to around the eye area. Very hydrating. So let's go ahead and get started with the Hourglass Veil Oil-Free Foundation my goodness when this came out it was like somebody had made a twin for Vita Lumiere by Chanel and you guys know that that's one of my favorites if not my favorite foundation is the Vita Lumiere Chanel well this one came out and I was blown away and I'm surprised I don't reach for it as much as I used to and I realize it's because the color range is a little too yellow and I am somebody who is a warm neutral base so I have golden yellow tones in my skin and this was just too yellow for me so although it is a beautiful formulation I just couldn't find the right shape now before I try this on I wanted to let you guys know a couple of points or benefits when it comes to this foundation so I'm going to read a couple of things to you over here so it states that it's a long wear foundation that helps defend against the signs of aging it has matrix regeneration complex which stimulates the skin's matrix it's a private blend by Hourglass. It is a concentrated serum-like formula and it's equivalent to an extension of your skincare regime. The natural radiant finish looks like second skin as if you're not wearing foundation. It has an SPF 15 and it is vegan. The big thing about Hourglass when it came out I remember being wowed by is that it was a skincare makeup in one brand and I'd heard a lot of that before in my 25 year career, like, you know, this is a mix of skincare and, you know, makeup, but this to me was the one that did it absolutely beautifully. It seemed to get down the perfect formulation of skincare ingredients mixed with a good color and texture when it came to the actual application on the skin. All right, let's try this on. I'm gonna do about a pump and a half. And as you can see, it's just so yellow. And this is a 1.5, so it's on the lighter side of the color chart. All right, so I put this on my Real Techniques Beauty Blender sponge. I'm just gonna put a couple of dots in the middle of the face here. I'm gonna lean in now and let you guys see the actual coverage and texture on this. As you can see, it really leaves a second skin-like appearance. It feels so light to the touch. It's already starting to dry down. It has a dewy finish, but it's not super wet or glossy looking. It definitely sets down, but it leaves a nice sheen on the skin. So I just love this foundation. In fact, I forgot just how much I love it. I'm going to see if I can go down maybe a shade or two and purchase another bottle in a lighter shade. Next product I have here is the Hidden Corrective Concealer. And this is such a good product that, as you can see, it's twisted all the way up. I have used all of it. This is all that is left, which is very little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and try to 
push a little bit of this onto my face and if not, I'll dig in with my finger or a brush to get the rest out. Now, before I get started, I wanna read you a couple of benefits as usual. It says that this is a creamy weightless concealer. It's meant for camouflaging with an undetectable natural finish. It covers redness, broken capillaries, hyperpigmentation, blemishes, acne scars, and dark circles. Long wearing, hydrating, and it doesn't settle into fine lines and it has vitamin E to help protect the skin from environmental stressors. So I'm gonna go in here and just do a couple of little dots around the eye area. We'll do a little lifting here. I'm gonna go ahead and conceal these shadows around the mouth that happen naturally to all of us just from having the nose and the creases that sit around the mouth. We'll highlight a little bit on the chin tiny, tiny, tiny bit down the nose just to bring some light to the center of the face. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on top of my brow bone there. So I'm really just trying to pull features forward so that the rest of my skin looks more defined. As you add light to certain areas of the skin, your just normal skin flesh tone will look more pulled back because we have something that is in contrast to the light. So I'm gonna take my finger here and I'm going to just tap this on. And you guys know I love to work with my finger because it has heat and oil, which helps to soften pigments. I will go back with my beauty blender and just kind of press it into the skin. And because my beauty blender has some water on it, add some hydration to the skin. And water kind of basically softens or diffuses pigmentation in products. So you get a little bit more of what I like to call a snail sheen. When you see like a snail and it has that viscous uh, texture to it and it just kind of leaves a nice tight or taut finish, that's what I feel water basically does to the skin. It kind of seals everything and gives a nice kind of slick uh, appearance to the skin. Whatever's left on my finger, I just kind of tap it on the upper eye area to neutralize any discoloration, veins, etc. So I'm gonna take my beauty blender now on this portion of the face so that you can see how to work with a beauty blender when it comes to your concealer. And as I always say, when in doubt, blend it out or press and roll. So we're gonna press and then we're gonna roll. Pressing pushes the makeup into the skin so that it adheres to the skin and the oils in your face and then pressing and rolling buffs it out, picks up any excess product and evens out texture. Okay, I'm gonna do my other eye and then let's get into the next product. All right, let's get into some contour and highlighting. This next product is an award winner, literally. It is one of my top three favorite when it comes to contour and highlight. My others, if you're curious, are I love Love the Westman Atelier contour stick because it has a cool undertone, so it creates a true contour on the face. And I absolutely love the Chanel bronzer that I use as a contour. And my favorite highlighters are Westman Atelier as well as the Chanel Bomb Sticks and the RMS Living Luminizer. This is the Illume Share Color Trio. Your blush, your highlighter, and your bronzer. Now, of course, I wanna read a little bit about this and then we're gonna try it on. This states that it's the award-winning Illume Sheer Color Trio. It's a cult favorite, features everything needed for subtle definition and a wash of color. Bronzer, blush, and highlighter with a luxe cream to satin finish. And here are some main points. It says that it's sheer, buildable formula and packs natural color. It's mistake-proof formula can be blended for custom shades and it's a multitasking palette which is ideal for travel and easy touch-ups and of course it is vegan. So there you go. It's such a great palette and yes, it is fantastic for traveling. You can do so many looks specifically because you can wear this as your lip and your cheek. This is your bronzer obviously but you can also use it as a shadow for the crease of your eye and then your highlighter obviously you can use throughout the face. Pop it on the lid, upper area, cheekbone, nose, lips. It's just one of those palettes you can get so much out of it. All right, I'm gonna use my Marc Jacobs The Face 2 Awesome Angled Brush. Love this brush. I wish we would come out with just a whole set of these brushes. Marc Jacobs, if you ever are listening to me, please come out with The Face Angled Brushes. It's so good. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and try this beauty on. So I'm gonna start with the edge of the brush. I'm gonna dip it into the bronzer here, and this is the cream bronzer. Just gonna add a little bit. I'll tell you, this is one of those products that less is more. 
In fact, I'm going to take my brush and I'm wiping some of that off on the back of my hand because I didn't pick up much, but it is very rich and this palette does last a long time because the quality in here is top notch. All right, from there, I'm going to take my brush and lightly start to stipple in the color. Work from the top of the ear to the outer eye area or where your brow ends, basically. And the idea is we want to sculpt and push that line back. So this is gonna give us some lifting as well as some sculpting. So once I have that line right there, I'm gonna go in at an angle now and work up and that will help to lift the skin a bit. You know one that I forgot to mention that is really, really good too? I'll put it in my top five because this is in my top three. Um, it probably comes in, ties for third or fourth place I'd say is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate palette. Woo that one is a beauty. Okay, so I'm just working around the face here, really working at an angle, and I'm gonna go slow here so that you guys can see how I'm working with this brush. I'm just moving in a C, up and around, whatever's left over, I very ever so lightly dust on top of the eyebrow. Just lightly work around here. We don't want to do a heavy hand right here because it'll look just very muddy and it can just look artificial. So very light handed work in a C. Really most of the color is going to be deposited in this lower cheek area. I just add a little bit into the hairline and then move around the ear here. Now I'm going to take, I've been working off the edge of this brush, so now I'm going to take this and flip it around and use this part of the brush. I'm going to lift a little more. This will help to blend out the cream bronzer. Isn't that stunning? It just gives the most natural second skin like finish. I'm going to wipe the brush off a bit. I have a paper towel down here and you don't have to clean it with like water. Just, you know, wipe it really good with uh, a paper towel and that will take off the excess product. And let's go in with the highlighter now. I'm going to do the same technique. I'm going to grab the highlighter with the brush that's more on the edge of the brush here. I'm going to go in and just make sure I didn't grab too much, kind of dust some of that off. From there, I'm going to go lightly, just kind of tap a little bit here on top of the cheekbone. And from there, I'm going to lightly sweep it out at an angle, kind of working in that C shape again. Now, if you are somebody who has a lot of aging concerns or a lot of deep wrinkles around this eye area, don't go up into this eye area. Go down a little tiny bit. That way you don't have any light reflective pigments kind of drawing attention to that area. You wanna really go around in any kind of deep set wrinkles around the eye. So you'd wanna bring it down here just a bit. So more on top of the cheekbone instead of a little above the cheekbone. So here is a nice subtle highlighter. Whatever's left over on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead now and dust on my nose. You guys know I like a very soft application when it comes to highlighter on the nose. No high beam here, just a very natural way of capturing light is what I'm looking for. I'll take a little bit and just brush it across the lips. Take a little bit of this highlighter now with my finger and just tap it on the eye area. I love this palette for eyes because I use it on the lower half. I use a bit on the brow bone. And then I'm gonna go in with a small shadow brush and use the bronzer color in the palette as a shadow. So since it's a cream texture, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Kevin Aquan sculpting brush because it's a synthetic brush. It'll pick up just the right amount of product, not too much and not get uh, a streaky appearance. I'm gonna dip a little bit of that into the bronzer. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna tap this on. I'm gonna work into that crease shape here. The real point is to put it a little bit into the socket in the corner to do some lifting like a light V and then work onto that brow bone and softly work up to create a transition between dark medium to light. So most of the products really in that eye socket and then I start to slowly build up creating a medium transition then to a very light color. 
Okay, can you see the difference between this side of the face that has the highlighter on it and the sculpting in the eye compared to this side? I hope so. <laughs> All right, I went ahead and wiped the brush. I'm gonna do the last color in the palette, which is the cream blush. I'm going to tap this blush color here just a very little bit and of course again working off the back of my hand take a little excess off as you can see I didn't do that much and this is how richly pigmented these are you guys look at that but you know this is a great time to show you guys look at the sheen on my hand do you see the finish on these it is like not even just a second skin like finish in texture it is a better version of my actual skin it just leaves the most soft almost like a halo glow like effect on the skin. I just, yeah, I'm falling in love with Hourglass products again. I think I'll be playing with them quite a bit. I think if I mix these with my Westman Atelier, ooh, that would be the most beautiful combination. All right, let's go ahead and pop a little of this on the cheek area here. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and take my angle on my brush and just lightly sweep it on top of the cheek. Now feel free if you want to brighten the eye a bit to take the brush that you used, your Kevin Aquam brush that you used for the contour in the eye socket, work off the back of your hand and grab a little bit of that peach that you le that was left there. And what you're gonna do is just tap it right on top of the brow bone area. And this will give you a bit more of a spring-like eye. So by adding the colors from the face to the eye area, it gives a really beautiful, uniformed look. So here is the look of the Color Trio palette. I'm gonna go ahead now and do the other side and then we'll get into the next product. All right, so both sides of the face are done and I wanted to briefly mention the cream varnish sticks that just came out. And I did already do a video on these and the link will be below, but I at least wanted to show you guys for those who haven't seen the video what these beauties look like. They're so good. <laughs> Please watch the video if you're interested in seeing the performance on these blushes because, uh, spoiler alert, they're very good. I got the colors in Devoted and Ravel. Ah, oh, might as well add a little bit. <laughs> Since they're out, you know, might as well pop a little on. I'm just gonna put a couple little swatches here on the cheek. Now I'm going to take my finger and just lightly move that blush upward. Ooh, love it. I'm going to take my sponge now and just kind of tap it, soften any pigments that are just sitting on the skin here. All right, let's go ahead and try the new lip color. Okay, let's try the new Velvet Story Lip Cream. And of course, I'm gonna read a little bit over here to you guys. So it states that it's a featherweight lip mousse that delivers a diffused, soft focus matte finish. Velvety texture for comfortable wear. Unlike traditional matte lipstick, this formula delivers an infusion of color that floats on the lips and provides a soft focus blurring effect. The whipped texture goes on smooth, leaving a cushiony velvet feel. Features a custom tapered application for precise definition. Well, let's see if it lives up to its claim. <laughs> so what I have here is the color called Crush. I'm going to do a swatch here on the back of my hand so that you can see the texture. I'm going to do actually a couple swatches here so you can see the texture and then I'll just do one swatch for you guys to see. Not dry. Feels very, very good. A great matte lipstick, but I worry that it's not gonna stay on very long. Um, the new Dior Stay On Lipsticks, but you know what, I'm gonna grab and show you guys right now after I'm done talking about this one, because I wanna show you guys the difference. The Dior is matte like this, but it is literally mask proof it states in there that it's fabric proof mask proof stay on for like 12 plus hours doesn't move um is better because it actually stays on the skin longer and it is the same kind of formulation so i went and grabbed my rouge dior forever liquid lipsticks these are the new formula and then this is the color and it's very similar to the hourglass one uh, called forever grace 
I'm going to do a swatch so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Do a couple more swatches here. So here's the hourglass and then here's the Dior. Wow. I definitely have a color preference. <laughs> I didn't realize they were so similar, but you can see this is a little bit more emollient than the Dior. Um, the Dior, as it's starting to settle down, doesn't move, but it still has a really nice hydrating and sheen-like texture to it. All right, let's go ahead and do the last product that I have here by Hourglass. All right, I added a little mascara, the Dior Show Over Curl that I just put on to kind of bring the whole look together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use my favorite setting spray that you guys probably see me use quite a bit in most of my videos. So here we have the Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray. So this is an Allure Best of 2020 winner and you will see why in a second here. So I'm gonna read a little information and then I'm gonna show you guys what makes this so fantastic. But states, see your skin through a soft focus lens that lasts all day long. This lightweight spray sets makeup while blurring imperfections, undetectable on the skin. And here is the key. What makes this product so good is that it uses an ultra fine and hydrating mist, which creates a smooth, even naturally radiant appearance and it's water resistant. So the main properties when it comes to this product, why I love it so much, is that it sets makeup for 24 hours. It has a natural radiant finish and the mist that comes out of this product is where it just is phenomenal. There's nothing like it on the market when it comes to the delivery of this setting spray. So let me show you what I mean. And I hope the camera picks this up here. It leaves the softest, ultra fine, hydrating mist that comes out of here is no joke, you guys. It just hits every part of the face without being too much. Now, if you guys haven't seen and you wanna laugh, my Dior video on their setting spray that just came out, <laughs> it's like you're spraying um, a small hose on your face. It just comes out in like, big droplets, small droplets, medium droplets. It does not have a fine mist. So um, although I liked the product's finish of the Dior on my face, I did not like the scent and I did not like the delivery. So this on the other hand is light. Not overly fragrant. In fact, I don't even think it has really a fragrance at all. It just smells really super, super light. Whatever's in there, you can hardly smell it, which is great. But it just leaves the most beautiful, even toned complexion. And it really does make your makeup last all day. And I find that if my makeup's looking a bit dry, I'll just add this and it just perks the makeup right back up. So if you're looking for a really great setting spray, it's really, really, really good. <laughs> Definitely recommend this. Love it. All right, my beauties, we've hit the end of the video. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to assist you guys. And if you like what you're seeing, the best way to support Street Voyage is to hit the like button, leave me a comment, and most importantly, subscribe and use the affiliate links down below. I'll have everything I used on my face today and right underneath there is a list of stores that you could shop for anything your heart desires. I get a small commission and then I put that commission back into buying makeup and different products to share with you guys. All right, everybody, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'll see you in the next video.